Good morning, my friends. This is the Grim Flayer. I hope you're doing very well today. I am here to tell you why I am mostly retiring from Magic, the Gathering, and sad news. Some might call it Grim Tidings, but this is how it's got to be. Now my Patreon community already knows about this about a week ago. I gave them a very thorough and extensive write-up regarding the whys and the wherefores of this decision, and I'm coming to you, the broader viewership, today in the hopes of bringing you kind of a truncated version of this. So this is, um, this is why. This is why I have to take a major step back. Now, that doesn't mean I'm fully disengaged from the game, I'll maintain a more casual relationship to it, and I'm going to play at least a few more donation leagues before I kind of complete my step back, and I'll tell you all about that in the video to come. Thank you very much in advance for watching, and thank you so much for watching all of the content I've put out over the last few years. It has been a wild, wild ride, my friends, but things have got to change. Here's why. The first and most important factor kind of prompting this decision is my work life and other real life circumstances. So for the past year, I've been working six days a week, much more often than not, been working plenty of overtime, and of course I have two small children at home. That was my baseline normal week in, week out life, right? And it was very difficult, I'm not gonna lie, to play even a moderate amount of Magic under that schedule um, and to maintain enough engagement with other content, with the community, with the format as a whole, to retain it, um, an acceptable level of expertise. Now, if Modern wasn't kind of a soft rotating format like it's become, that could be a different story. story. You could kind of set things aside for a little while, come back when you have time, not much has changed. Frankly, that's what I hoped for when I signed up for Modern. We all know that's not the case any longer, so both factors, my own personal life being very busy, Modern demanding an increasing amount of time and investment in order to maintain a similar, similar level of expertise, this was squeezing me pretty hard anyway. And then a couple weeks ago, I got basically informed at work that I'll be working even more than I have been for the past year. And that's just it. That's just it for me. Like, I, I can no longer commit to having enough engagement with Modern to remain an expert. And um, I don't know, frankly, if I've been an expert in anything in Modern for a little while now. I did absolutely consider myself a BG Rock expert when that first, when my channel first came out, right? And in the year or year and a half, maybe two years after that. But as we all know, the deck that I signed up to play has been mostly squeezed out of the format. It's not particularly that recognizable compared to how it used to be. And of course, its meta share is a lot less than it once was in the Halcyon days of 2017, right? In the pre-MH1 uh, modern as well. 2018, Rock was still pretty good. MH1 was kind of the beginning of the end for Rock as we knew it. So anyway, long story short, I don't have the time to play anymore, and that is definitely a little bit rough. All right, guys, and so to springboard off of that explanation that kind of weaves my own personal circumstances in with my own generalized view on modern, let's zero in on a couple more specific points that kind of have served to push me a little bit away from the game that I did once love so very, very much. Um, we're looking now at the top most 25 cards, excuse me, creatures played in modern, not cards, top 25 creatures in modern right now. And as you can see, an overwhelming majority of them are new printings from the last two years or so. And um, especially if you count stuff like Stoneforge Mystic and Shardless Agent that have been recently made legal, even if they've existed in the game as a whole for a while, it gets even more skewed toward new design. Now, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not really trying to talk people out of Modern right now. I think Modern right now is actually relatively healthy. 
and I think a lot of the MH2 cards that we see here, even super pushed ones like Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer, the design is not as egregious to me as it was in the Fire era at the very peak, the very zenith of the Fire era. 2019-2020, um, first half of 2020 that is, was the worst magic design for me. Um, and I think now MH2 was pretty well designed overall, it's just too powerful. That's the thing, the design is good, the design is interesting, these powerful cards have meaningful fail rates, and all the rest. However, it's just cranking up the power creep to 11, and that is the thing that I don't like, because in conjunction with all of the power sets that we've seen beginning with War of the Spark in the recent past, it serves to make Modern, as I said, kind of a soft rotating format, which is the opposite of what I signed up for, and the opposite of what Modern was for my first year or two playing it, and then several years preceding my own entry into the format. I signed up to play with cards like Tireless Tracker, in the context of a mid-range deck especially, that doesn't exist much anymore. Scavenging Ooze, Liliana the Last Hope, Dark Confidant. These are cards that really made me fall in love with the black-based mid-range archetype, the BGX archetype more specifically, and with Modern as a whole. And the landscape is just very, very different now. Um, and we can't expect nothing to ever change, but I think most of us would probably agree that the upheavals are too frequent and too momentous to be ideal. Now talking about new sets, let's take a quick scroll through the full preview of Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Innistrad, the original Innistrad, was one of a few sets that I encountered as an on and off kitchen table player throughout the years, right? My friends and I would play a little bit here and there, and then we'd take a break from the game for a few years, and then we'd be back. And one of the times that we were back, never playing in official format, maybe going to a draft occasionally, but uh, mostly playing at the kitchen table, uh, Innistrad was new and was very impactful for myself and for my friends in terms of kind of inculcating a love for the game in us. Now, Innistrad Midnight Hunt doesn't seem like it's going to nuke Modern again, which is awesome, and it's definitely a pretty cool set overall. That said, despite both of it checking both of those boxes for me, and despite me being, you know, kind of uh, naturally inclined to enjoy a set like this thematically, for me, I don't know why. Maybe it's just symptomatic of a broader falling out of love with the game. It's not quite doing it for me. Again, I think it's good. I think it's decent. It's hard to put my finger on exactly what my complaints are, but it doesn't quite hit the perfect notes that the original Innistrad did for me. The lack of immersion, the lack of just adoration for the game, for me personally at least, it's becoming impossible to ignore. In other words, if a balanced set with this theme didn't pull me back into the game, I'm not quite sure anything will. That said, I still don't have anything directly bad to say about Innistrad Midnight Hunt directly. However, what I do have something bad to say about, and I won't spend long on this because I made an entire video about it not that long ago, are the increasingly absurd secret layer printings. And I know they're not necessary to play the game, although one or two of them will be modern legal, which is horrifying to me. But you look at the secret layer Fortnite and the secret layer Walking Dead, and I understand everything about it. I understand the appeal to people who like crossovers conceptually. I understand the desire to tap into new markets, and I understand all of that, but for me, for somebody who values immersion, who values, you know, kind of tradition in the context of this game, who values steady things, things that don't change all the time, I really just am totally and completely turned off by the increasing presence of this type of crossover secret layer product in the game, even if it's not directly in my line of sight as a modern focused player. The other thing I'll say, my friends, is that I have taken this little opportunity uh, from this break in magic that I've had over the last month to play some other games. You may have noticed I've been uploading some Skyrim content, and I've been playing The Witcher 1 a bit off camera, which is a classic RPG series I've never touched before, and um, playing some more casual games a little bit like FIFA. All of these are games that I can play in my, you know, couple of free hours before bed. 
whereas the, um, you know, playing leagues and magic, especially if I'm commentating, it, it disturbs my sleep. I'm not quite able to uh, consider that a relaxing activity, a little bit too competitive for me. Um, whereas these other games, they fit my schedule better, and you know what, guys? Honestly, they're just more fun, at least for me right now. I do not intend to um, kind of kill anybody's buzz for magic, but I almost forgot how fun playing video games could be. And everybody's, you know, um, everybody's at a different stage with their hobbies. Maybe some people have been playing RPGs for a while and they all have become a little bit of a chore. And something like magic could be just what the doctor ordered for them. In my own case, it's a little bit different, but I have been having a ton of fun with Skyrim and with other games, and I do encourage you, please do check out the Skyrim content. It's a vibe, it's really chill, it's fun, um, and it's just, it's just kind of like what I need from a gaming experience right now. It's a way for me to stay sane with my own uh, 9 to 5 life, and it's also a way for me to continue bringing you content. Even if you're not that into Skyrim, you can throw it on in the background, while you commute, while you wash dishes, whatever it's going to be. But if you're not into Skyrim, why not? This game is sweet. So as for my plans for this channel, guys, you might see a rebrand in the near future. I think I might call myself Grim Gaming henceforth. I'll still refer to myself as Grim, maybe, rather than the Grim Flayer, but we're still staying in the Grim kind of uh, milieu, but maybe having a more generalized handle. And, uh, you know, if you have any other suggestions, maybe Grim Gaming is a little generic. If you have any better suggestions, you can leave them in the comments below. But you're seeing the thumbnail here of our most recent Magic the Gathering League, which was for Jund. It was Donation League 97. Now, I did promise my Patreon supporters that I would honor any and all Donation League um, accruals and even be very flexible with doing so if people haven't quite made it to the mark or, you know, they're close is going to be close enough, right, is basically how I phrased it, through the end of October. So we're going to see a few more donation leagues roll in, I'm sure, before the end of the year. I want to reach that 100 DL milestone, that is for sure. I even might have a pretty cool idea for what to do with the 100th one as a collaborative effort, but more on that later. Stay tuned to the channel for that. And as I take a step back from Magic content, know that that doesn't rule out me ever playing again, even after I've kind of buttoned up all the outstanding DLs, nor does it rule out me making videos regarding it. Even, even though I won't be much of an active player any longer. Maybe I should still do Will It Rock, Will It Jun videos. I'm still following the game closely through the exploits of the people in my Discord community. I can still pick up what's being put down, you know? I can still analyze cards. Maybe that's something you'd like to see me do. Maybe I'll talk about big developments in Magic in general on this channel. But beyond that, guys, you can expect to see some Skyrim gaming for sure. We're continuing Halvar's Saga and in November, Skyrim Anniversary Edition comes out. I'd like to play that for sure, see what that brings, and then maybe start adding mods to the game as I go. I'm also definitely going to get into other games on the channel. As you know, I can't play everything, can't play all in Sundry, can't play all that often, given what I outlined with my schedule at the beginning of this video, but I do not want what I built here to kind of crumble into nothingness. So for my own part, I'm going to be continuing to bring you content with as high of a quality and at as regular of a frequency as my life will allow. And as for the community here, everybody who is on Patreon, on Discord, they are members there for life. So the community is still alive, still thriving, still the best community, as far as I'm concerned, in all of the gaming world. Thank you all so much for all of the views, comments, likes, and support down the years. I truly do love you all. At the end of the day, like I said in my write-up, I'm just a regular guy who really loved BG The Rock and 2016 to 2018 Modern. Decided to go out on a limb, make some videos for all of you, and 
I've had more success than I could ever possibly dream of. That is all down to you, the viewer, you, the supporter. Thank you again, guys, for everything. I'll see you for all of the fun content we've got coming up for the next decade, hopefully, or more, and certainly for at least three more Magic the Gathering donation leagues. Let me know what you think about all these developments, any ideas you have for the continuance of the channel and the content, whether or not it relates directly to Magic, and of course, let me know where your head is at with Modern, with the kind of soft rotating format that it's become, with some of the other things that I mentioned herein. You know I always love to hear from you. You know I'll always do my best to reply, and I'll see you in the comments below. Take care, guys. Talk to you soon.